Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, and all are welcome to my new broadcasting of Waiting on God. And for today, it is for the promise of the Father. This is your pastor, Yadi. Our scripture for today is um, Acts chapter 1, verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. In speaking of the saints of in, in Jerusalem at Christ's birth, with Simeon and Anna, we saw how the call to waiting is no less urgent now, though the redemption they waited for has come. Then, it was then. We wait for the full revelation in us of what came to them, but what they could scarcely comprehend. In the same way, it is with waiting for the promise of the Father, and in one sense, the fulfillment can never come again as it came at Pentecost. In another sense, and that in as deep a reality as with the first disciples, we need to wait daily for the Father to fulfill His promise in us. The Holy Spirit is not a person distinct from the Father in the way two persons on earth are distinct. The Father and the Spirit are never without or separate from each other. The Father is always in the Spirit, and the Spirit works nothing but as the Father works in Him. And each moment, the same Spirit that is in us is in God, too. And He, who is most full of the Spirit, will be the first to wait on God most earnestly to further fulfill. His promise, to further fulfill His promise and to still strengthen Him mightily by Spirit in the inner man. The Spirit in us is not a power at our disposal. Nor is the Spirit an independent power acting apart from the Father and the Son. The Spirit is the real living presence in the power of the Father working in us. And therefore, it is He who knows that the Spirit is in him who waits on the Father for the full revelation and experience of the Spirit's indwelling. It is he who waits for his increase and abounding more and more. See this in the Apostles. They were filled with the Spirit at Pentecost, when they not long after, on returning from the council, where they had been forbidden to preach. Bread prayed afresh for boldness to speak in his name. A fresh coming down of the Holy Spirit was the Father's fresh fulfillment of his promise. At Samaria, by the word and the Spirit, many had been converted, and the whole city was filled with joy. At the Apostles' Prayer, the Father once again fulfilled the promise. When the Apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. So even so to the wedding company, we are all here before God. And you can read that in Acts 10, verse 33. Let's go there. 
So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all there in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. We are all here before God. In Cornelius' house, they were there, and so too. And in Acts 13, it was when man filled with the Spirit prayed and fasted that the promise of the Father was afresh fulfilled, and the leading of the Spirit was giving them, given from heaven, separate me, Barnabas, and Saul. Acts 13, verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So also we find Paul in Ephesians praying for those who have been sealed with the Spirit, that God would grant them the Spirit of illumination. And later on, that he would grant them, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by the power of the Holy Spirit in the inner man. The Spirit given at Pentecost was not something that God filled with in heaven and sent out of heaven to earth. God does not, cannot give away anything in that manner. When he gives grace or strength or life, he gives it by giving himself to work it. It is all inseparable from himself. Much more is the Holy Spirit. How much more is so the Holy Spirit. He is God, present and working in us. The true position in which we can count upon that working with an unceasing power is as we, praying for what we have, still unceasingly wait for the Father's promise to be still more mightily fulfilled. What new meaning and promises does this give to our lives of waiting? It teaches us to continually keep the place where the disciples tear it at the footstool of the throne. It reminds us that, as helpless as they were to meet their enemies or to preach to Christ's enemies until they were undued with power, we, too, can only be strong in the life of faith or the work of love, as we are in direct communication with God and Christ. They must maintain the life of the Spirit in us. This assures us that the omnipotent God will, through the glorified Christ, work in us a power that can bring unexpected things to pass, impossible things. Oh, what the church will be able to do when her individual members learn to live their lives waiting on God. When together with all of self and the world sacrificed in the fire of love, they united in waiting with one accord for the promise of the Father, once so gloriously fulfilled but still unexhausted. Come, and let each of us be still in the presence of the inconceivable grandeur of this prospect. The Father waiting to fill the church with the Holy Spirit, and willing to fill me. Let each one say, with this faith, let the hush and the holy fear come over the soul, as it waits in stillness to take it all in. And that life increasingly become a deep joy in the hope of the ever fuller fulfillment of the Father's promises. My soul, wait you only upon God. May you have a longing for a new refreshment of the Holy Spirit. The gift is already given, but we can ask more, because sometimes 
we go through dry land. Face your reality where you are and leave it up to God because He is your planner. He is the one who gives you the real answers and the real insight. And I'm not saying that we cannot make plans or that's not what I'm saying or don't make any decisions but I think it's good and all we invite God that the Spirit will lead us guide us on our Christian journey may you have a longing the desire to follow Christ and a deeper intimacy than you ever experienced This is your pastor, Yeti. I love you guys. Bye.